Hello everyone. So this video is for if you've decided for your final rodeo picture, if you're going to do mostly just color pencil. Um, if you guys have your own sort of color pencils, those work fine too. But these are just like all the basic Crayola ones that I have. So I have like a couple of different types of browns. I got a regular black and a regular blue. Um, and the reason for just like picking some really basic colors is because you don't want to overwhelm yourself with like a million different colors. If you just pick some like really basic colors, um, it's easier just to mix them, just to sit there and like, oh, I got to pick this color. Oh, I got to pick that color. So once you have your basic picture, you've erased out all of your grid lines, and then you just have your pencil lines. You need to basically lay down your block colors. So I did mostly brown. I left the white patch for his blaze in there, and then I did my black for his eyes and his muzzle. Once you have all of this, then you're going to focus on value and adding in detail. So I'm just going to go back to the exact same brown that I laid down right here. And I'm going to go start getting in some of the really dark sections. So I had kind of, you can kind of see it right here, I have some pencil lines that help um, guide me to put in certain values. So what I'm going to try to do, like all of this is a two to three value range. I didn't do it like super dark. Now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to start adding in those value sections. Just make sure that you do it slowly. Don't just sit there and push it in really hard all of a sudden because this is Bristol paper. And I talked to some of you guys about what tooth is. And tooth is basically like if I have a flat sheet of paper, that means it's really smooth and I can't really lay any color on it. But if I have little ridges, color is what sits on top of all those little ridges. So anytime that you see those little white dots, that means that that's underneath that tooth that you haven't pushed it in yet. So if you sit there and push really hard, you're actually flattening your piece of paper, no more ridges, and basically you can't get as much color on there as you'd want. So if you do it slowly, instead of pushing down all those little teeth, then you're able to get more color and a more rich color. So I'm just gonna slowly but surely start adding in some value. So I have this, I'm not pushing really hard, and I'm trying to go in some different angles that I didn't have before. It's so like all of these are this way and I'm going in at a different angle. Just paying attention to the value that I got. Going back and looking at my picture. Okay, and this ridge follows up to where his mane is. And I can just blend it on in. So I just works like area by area. So right now I'm going to focus up here on his skull. Get this section that's nice and dark. Try to catch it at a couple different angles. Fill in that section really well. And I'm always looking at my picture just to make sure that whenever I'm ending or drawing in a section, so like I was looking to see where this ended and I look at my picture and yep, it finishes right here at the edge of the blaze, the darkest spot. Go back in, more of the eye. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'll actually be a little bit of black in there. So another thing is that whenever you guys are working with color, um, obviously everything just isn't straight one color, one color. So a lot of the times around the horses and their eyes and stuff, they have some black that occurs just from their skin showing through because their hair gets really short. So I'm going to go back now and start mixing some of my colors. So it gets really dark like right in here because like I said, the hair is really short. I'll mix them in together. So get your nice base color and then they blend in really well if you choose out like different angles. This dark ridge where his eyebrow comes through. Like I said it's important just to go light first and then you can always darken it out. Can't always pull it off, pull it back. It's easier just to make sure that you do it right the first time. Okay, there's his eyebrow section. Pull back down into the eye. And you see how I'm not doing like super black right now? I'm just kind of getting more or less a dark gray. I'm not going to get it super dark yet. We'll build up layers of value later. Just 
slowly but surely build it up. Okay, it's more or less all the same value, so I'm going to go work on the bottom of the eyelid. That all comes up here. Working some more of that black. Different angles. even a little bit of black right in here. Like I said, just work on one section at a time once you finish most of it. Not exactly up to the value where you want it, but more or less pretty close. Then you start working in the next area. So I'm still going around this side, trying to get all those value sections in. back in with some more brown later. This ridge is really dark. Or it connects in with the mouth. I'm gonna go back to my brown real quick. This is where I got some of his veins that show through. ahead of time. And this ridge. I have to add some black in there too. And this fades out. black so it helps smooth it one but two gets the appropriate color it happened here on his little cheek area blends out a little bit this section making sure I get those different angles in there because I'm seeing a lot of white showing through for the ear. So you notice how I'm not like adding in all the different fur and stuff yet just because I'm focused on the value. Value is what's most important. This section's all pretty well dark. We've got some neck wrinkles. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, decent enough. Go back to the bottom of the neck. Some really dark values in here, but like I said, we'll worry about all those later. Another good thing that you can do is like they have this neck area, and because this is a muscle protruding, so it means it's sticking out, that we are actually just going to follow with our curvilinear lines to make sure that like I feel it rounded. It's going around the trachea of the horse. Whenever you're working on necks of humans, that also really helps give it some nice dimension. I'm not going to add all of it, just some. Okay. So I think that's going to be the end for this video. So whenever you guys see this next time, I'll have, you know, basically all the basic sketch marks, most of the um, generic value. Um, nothing anywhere like a pure dark or anything like that and then I'll show you guys how to add detail and then the final little bump of value so thank you guys for watching if you guys need any other help or any other questions or anything please just let me know and I'd be glad to help you out thank you for watching